Okay, our study of Proverbs, chapter 15, where we left off at verse 18. We are in the realm of right and wrong. Yes or no? We are at particular verses of a chapter in Proverbs that we are to look at our life and say, are we doing right or are we doing wrong? This could be in the Old Testament, and this could be the New Testament. Under a Christian, this could be in the tribulation. It sets forth, uh, and the Schofield note says, a contrast of goodness and evil. Where do we stand? To verse 18. A wrathful man stirs up strife. But he is slow to anger, appeases strife. So we got a wrath. Vengeance is mine. You cut me off, I'm going to shoot you, I'm going to stab you, I'm going to punch your lights, I'm going to break your windows. And you get someone that is slow to anger. Now the Bible says, be angry. Now I am angry with the Catholic Church. And the dogmas and teachings and uh, the traditions of that church, that it is damning people to hell. And in my anger, I'm not sinning, I will deal with Catholics or try to deal with Catholics with the Bible. I'm not going to go in and, and chop off the heads of all the statues. I'm not going to go up there and, and step on their host and put it on the ground and step all over it. It's stupid. A wrathful man would, would burn the place down. But slow to anger, and you both have strife. One stirs up strife, argument, problem. The other one, okay. We can work it out. And we got that going on with the farmer's market. I can go in there angry, rawr! I can go, okay. I'll go peacefully now. I'll call the people I need to call. And if I, if I can come back, I'll be back. And if I'm doing wrong, I apologize for doing wrong. And I'll adjust myself. The way of the slothful, he doesn't do nothing, man, is as a hedge of, of thorns. But the way of the righteous is made plain. A righteous man is not slothful. See the contrast? There's a way of a slothful and a way of the righteous. If you're a lazy Christian, you're at error. Or er, however you want to say it. <coughs> Again, forgive me for my coughing and everything. A hedge of thorns. Can you picture what song? Hey, here's a path, and the path is just overpowered with thorns and hedges that have thorns. Ouch. Cut. Bruises. Pain. Something, you, you, I, I go around, unless I get some hedge trimmers. But the way of the righteous is made plain by God. Right ways is, is clear. Set forth through the scriptures. A wise son maketh a glad father. Plain and simple. A foolish man despises his mother we got a wise son and we got a foolish man and it's taking granted that man's grown up he's a man and he has no due regard for his mother i've got two names down here i'm not going to mention but they're fools you know what the bible says about a fool a fool has in his heart that there's no god we have been looking at contrarize of people doing right and people being foolish. Do you make your parents glad? Or do you despise your parents as a Christian? What about father? Why son make it glad? What about that's God the father? Folly, that's the result that follows the foolish. 
is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom. But a man of understanding walketh uprightly. Now folly is connected with a fool. And he rejoices that he doesn't have the wisdom. There are people out there who, and we're talking about God in the Bible. There are people, I don't know about God. I don't want to know. I don't care. You know, it's your religion. It's, the book was written by men. I don't care. When we all die, we die and that's it. You know, we all go to the happy whatever kind of land. But a man of understanding walk is uprightly. Now let's look at an important verse here, Job 28, 28. This is one of the important verses of the Bible. Job 28, 28. I feel a sneeze coming on. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it don't. Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, God says, Behold the fear of the Lord, this is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Back to where we are. Folly is the joy, destitute of wisdom. He does not fear God. I'm afraid of coronavirus. I'm afraid of coronavirus. I ain't afraid of God. I'm afraid of losing my job, but I have no fear of God. And the opposite, a man of understanding that departs from evil, he'll walk uprightly, opposite of a fool. Without counsel. Listen to those who know. This would go great for Solomon's son Rehoboam. He went for the foolish counsel. Purposes are disappointed. It's the only time that word shows up. Disappointed. But in the multitude of counsels, more than one. Notice without counsel, advice. Now we got a multitude of counselors. They are established. They're not just yes men. As the story with uh, Rehoboam and his friends from school. You go to somebody who knows what you're doing or want to do, who has had example of what they've done, what you're doing, have gone through what you're what you're going through or about to go through. And it says counselors plural. They are established. What is the they? The purposes. So we have. Council that's disappointed purpose, and we have councils that the purpose is established. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season. How good it is! Is it? How good is it? There's a time and a place. Solomon says in the book of Ecclesiastes. There are times to say what you're going to say, and there are times that I'm going to refrain from saying what I was going to say. The way of life, we read about the tree of life, the way of life is above to the wise. And he may depart from hell beneath. The way of life is above, it's heavenly. It's not earthly. The way of life to get to God, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The opposite that will get you into hell is a man on earth with his doctrines, with his traditions, with his word. And to depart from hell beneath is by the wisdom of God. It's not what just man said. Yeah, the Bible is written by just man, but no other book written by man has been inspired by God as the book that we hold in our hand. The Lord will not destroy the house of the, 
The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. Again, it may have to be when the guy dies. Because there are plenty of proud people going about, moving about, doing about. But in the end, but he will establish the border of the widow. And throughout the law, there was a protection of the widows and fatherless, which they had no regard to, according to Jeremiah. I mean, a widow has nobody but God to trust. At least, back in our writings. It's a shame that you got widows today hanging out and living at the casino. And I know that for a fact. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. I said today, we're coming to the end of Mary Tamu's Mass. I got a little cup and couple of nuggets. I'm looking into uh, how we got the Bible. And later on, we still got the study of evil. That's going to be a while. I want to look at, hopefully, Lord willing, the abominations of the Bible. Because abomination, we, we think today abomination sodomites. Yeah, that's an abomination. But there are a lot more other abominations. When a wicked man thinks, that's an abomination to the Lord. I know what you guys are thinking. I'm not going to say it. I won't say it. But the idea of a wicked man thinking about, I mean, it, it just says the thoughts. It doesn't say the good thoughts. It doesn't say the bad thoughts. And then Genesis 6 says that the wicked man had the thoughts of violence. Maybe a wicked man, maybe, okay, there's a homeless guy there. I'm going to give him some money. The Lord says, you're wicked. That's an abomination to me. I'll go to church. and. But the words of the pure, which is opposite of the wicked, are pleasant words. So here's a, a man, he's thinking. God says, what you're thinking about? That's an abomination. Doesn't say good, it doesn't say bad. It says the thought. Now we got a guy who's who is he he his words, his actions, speaking, they're pleasant words. And we're going to the opposition of the wicked and would take it as the, the righteous. And when he speaks the words of God, they're pleasant words. Now they're not pleasant to the wicked man. He that is greedy of gain troubles his own house. The guy will do anything and everything to gain the gain, and it doesn't have to be money. It can be money, it can be goods, it can be junk. I'm watching this reality TV program, and I'm amazed at what junk people buy. You know, if I collect all these stuffed animals, we're going to be much money. And I'll get more. And God may come across and say, Yeah, fool, tonight your soul's going to be quiet. You're going to die. That person may take the food, the drink out of his wife and his children's mouth. He may take the clothing off the back so I can I can get a boat. Get all kinds of fishing gear. But he that hateth gifts shall live, and that gift is bribery. And that can be in any occupation, not just a judge. Because any occupation, you can have a buy-off. And that's not good. Especially in the eyes of God. And if you don't like and will not and put to the ground that I am not going to accept any bribe, you're going to live a good life. At least in the eyes of God, if you're a Christian. If you're a Christian and you take gifts and you take bribes, you're not 
If you're a Christian and you're gain, greedy gain, <coughs> causes trouble in your household, you're not doing very well. The heart of the righteous study its answer. So the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Peter says that we are to be able to give, and I'm not quoting the verse, but we're, let's, let's look at First Peter 3.15. Let's get it out of Peter's mouth, not mine. First Peter 3.15. You know why people don't witness? Oh, I'm afraid to talk. Yeah, yeah you are afraid to talk. 315, but sanctify the Lord in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of hope. This is in you with meekness and fear. You know why people don't witness? They don't take the time to study the Bible. They don't take time to memorize the Bible. And then when, when somebody puts them down, they get offended and they turn. Listen, I've been put down many times in my public ministry. And I go back and I study and I see what the right answer is. People don't want to put, they'll put more effort into sports and other nonsense and not in the Bible. And it says, study the answer. And, and Paul writes, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be changed, rightly to bind the word. But the mouth of the wicked. Opposite of the righteous pours out wicked, excuse me, pours out evil things. How are you doing, Christian? Are you studying the Bible so you can answer with your mouth? Notice how Peter also said heart. Could you lead somebody properly, properly, I must say, to Christ? Or is your mouth is filled with evil, wicked, worldly garbage trash? The Lord is far from the wicked. God hates to sin, but loves the sinner. Well, when you put that up on your wall, underneath it, put the Lord is far from the wicked. It's such a great saying, but it's 100% wrong against the Bible. But, I have to try to figure out what that word was, my right, my note. But he hears the prayers of the righteous. So what do you do when, when somebody says that God hears the prayer of the wicked people? Now it does not say that God completely ignores the wicked people. It says he's far. I'm not going to limit God and say God doesn't answer the prayer of the wicked. He's far from them. But he's more to hear the prayers of the righteous than he is of the wicked. I mean, the prayers of... Um, Cornelius came up to God and he was lost. The light of the eyes, and Jesus spoke about this often, rejoices the heart. And a good report maketh the bones fat. A healthy bones by good news. The Bible says that the gospel, the gospel is called good news. The ear that heareth reproof of life abideth among the wise. A man that will take reproof, a man that will take correction for his life and for his service to the Lord. The Bible says he's wise. A man that gets angry and offensive and 
walks out and quits. That's not proper with God. He that refuses instruction despises his own soul. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and doubt you. Uh, okay. If you don't do what the Bible tells you, your soul is going to go to hell one day. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to shut that preacher up. We're going to put... Okay, but you can do what you want to the preacher. Your eternal soul... <coughs> <coughs> Remember, okay, that's a little. Sorry. Remember what Jesus told Paul on the road to Damascus. Jesus said, Why persecutest thou me? You're not shooting a messenger, you're shooting God. But he that heareth reproved getteth understanding. You're going to listen to what the preacher said. You're going to listen to what the Holy Spirit says in the Bible. You're going to listen to when you read your Bible and the reproof, you'll gain understanding. Understanding comes by the word of God. The fear of the Lord. There's that fear again. Fools don't have that fear. Job 28, 28. The fear of the Lord is destruction of wisdom. Look at verse 32. The ref he that refuses destruction despises his soul because he does not fear God. That person and people you're dealing with that rejects the message of the gospel is because they have no regard and no fear for God. And... You can say it or not, be, but the Bible says they're fools. And the fool has said in his heart that there's no God. Well, you know, they're, they're, yeah, they're religious, but they have no God. They don't have Jesus. And before honor is humility. You're not going to be honored by God until you're humble. If you're pride and arrogant and, and lofty, that is a sin, and the Bible says, you know, pride comes a fall. And I'm not talking about the season. Daniel humbled himself. Hannah humbled herself. God works with those that are meek. He doesn't work with those that are prideful. 